find the zeros of f of x equals x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. In order to find the zeros of f of x, that's equivalent to saying find the x values which give f of x is equal to 0. Well, one way to start here is to take our original third order polynomial, the cubic, which looks like this, and factor an x squared out of the first two terms. This is a little on the unusual side, but you'll see why this is helpful. So when you factor an x squared out of x cubed, you're left with an x. When you factor an x squared out of x squared, you've got a negative 1. Plus, and then I'll just put parentheses around x minus 1. Now notice what you have here in this case. What you have is you have x squared times x minus 1 plus 1 times x minus 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor an x minus 1 out of both of those terms. And it boils down to this. Now if you think about it right, this second term right here is the difference of two squares. And this will become x minus 1 times x minus i times x plus i. Now that may not be obvious at first, and the way you double check to see if that was right is you would do FOIL on this. So here for the first terms we have x times x, which is x squared. This gives you x times i. This gives you negative x times i. Those cancel. And i times i is negative 1, and the opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So these two do multiply to x plus 1. Now if we're trying to find the values such that x equal, f of x equals 0, we can equate this to 0. And now you can see that what we have is we have one thing times another thing times another thing is equal to 0. And because of that, we can say x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus i is equal to 0. Or finally, x plus i. is equal to 0. So to solve these equations, in the case of the first equation, we add 1 to both sides. When we add 1 to the left-hand side, we get x. When we add 1 to the right-hand side, we get 1. To solve this second equation, we add i to both sides of the equation. So when you add i to the left-hand side of the equation, you get x. When you add i to the right-hand side of the equation, you get i. And finally, for the last equation, this equation can be solved by subtracting i from each side. When you subtract i from the left-hand side, you get x. When you subtract i from the right-hand side, you get minus i. So this particular polynomial, cubic polynomial, has three roots. And those three roots are x equals 1, x equals i, and x equals minus i. And so if you were to draw a graph of this particular equation, it would strike the x-axis only once, and that is at x equals 1.